Hey guys, happy Tuesday. It's that dividend guy. Hopefully everybody's having a GGD, a great green day in the market. You know I always wish the best for my viewers and subscribers. So guys, today we're going to go over the overall portfolio. We're going to go over the individual performance based on the day, week, month, three month mark, year to date, year, um, and all time as well as the buying power. So guys, I did have $150 sitting in the account that was from dividends last month, but I got paid that $313.60 dividend from Altria, ticker symbol MO. So now I have $463 to play with in the market, or if I don't think anything is a deal or I don't want to buy the current stocks that are that are sitting at a deal right now, I could always reallocate it to something else. So I have possibilities, I have options here. So as of right now, as of close, um, here on Tuesday night, we're sitting at $51,195.04. We were up $22 today, down $56 total overnight. So we pretty much broke even here, negative about 30 bucks. Not worried about it too bad at all. Next, we've got that one week mark. We're down $238, down about half a percent. Then that one month mark, guys, we are down $2,400, down about 4.5% for the past month. That three-month mark, we are up $560 with a 1.1% return. Then, year-to-date, we're up $1,362.11, a 2.73% return year-to-date. That one-year mark, we're up $505 with a 1% return. And then all time, we're at $15,855.14 with a 44.86% return all time. And guys, like I said, that buying power did go up $313. I got paid that Altria dividend. So we're going to look in the portfolio and see if there's anything I want to buy. Of course, right now, I'm not going to buy it on camera simply because the market is closed. So if I do it, I might do it tomorrow. We'll see if there's anything that I want to purchase at these prices. So jumping right in, Realty Income. Sitting at 53.43, down about 62 cents today. 170 shares, $9,000 worth of market value. Average cost is right around 65 bucks a share, so buying it right now would lower my my average cost by about 10 bucks per share. A little over that, so a great cost on average opportunity here. Around 18% of the portfolio is in Realty Income. And guys, one of the reasons that I love Realty Income so much is because it is a monthly payer. It pays me every single month, about 43 bucks each month. So that's like pretty much a uh, free PS5, PS4, PS5 game um, every single month for not having to pay for it. That's a nice dinner date. You know, there's, there's a lot you can do with 45 bucks. So I love... Um, that it's a monthly payer, as well as I do love real estate. I just don't understand it um, thoroughly enough to put my money into an into a physical property quite yet. So realty income is a great way to get some exposure to real estate with without having that individual risk of like a home loan, having to go through and find a buyer. So there's a lot of positives with realty income. They do all the real estate. Um, they do the location. They do the tenants. They, they check their balance sheets. They check their credit ratings, their payment history, all that. I don't have to worry about any of it. And so I, that's one of the reasons why I love realty income so much. So as of right now, guys, it would be a great opportunity to buy realty income. But let's check and see if there's anything else that I would rather allocate these funds to. Coca-Cola sitting at 61.76 down 26 cents today. 15 shares. Guys, this is going to be one of the bigger positions in the portfolio. About $930 of market value. Average cost is 60.54, so we are up a little bit here on Coca-Cola. Nearly 2% of the portfolio is in Coca-Cola. Today we're down $4.20. Total we're up $18 with a 2% return on the stock. Love Coca-Cola. I would want to get more shares around that $60 mark. I want to cost down average. I don't want my average cost going up. Even though it's not a huge increase to the average cost, I probably don't want to be buying at these prices. I want it to drop a bit more before I allocate more capital to, to Coca-Cola. Next, we've got Altria, which just paid us $313. So 320 shares, $14,000 worth of market value. Average cost is $47.27. About 28% of the portfolio is in Altria. Today, we are break even. Total, we're down $1,100. And guys, if I wanted to put that $313 into the stock, that would be about seven or eight shares. So I could allocate seven more shares and get more cash flow from real, excuse me, from Altria, 
But the reality is I have a really big position in Altria already, and I don't want to allocate more capital to this position at this time. Even though it is a cost down average opportunity by uh, uh, quite a bit, I would rather buy realty income at these prices. And there might be another company in the portfolio that I would allocate those dollars to. Jumping into Apple here, it's down today at 170.06, down $3.44, which I only have one share, but our market value is 170.06, 132 dollars is our average cost 0.34 percent of the portfolio is in apple today we're down 344 total we're up nearly 40 dollars with a 37 dollar and 40 cent total return sitting at 28.2 percent on my single share so guys i should have bought a lot more apple when i did originally but i only use dividends to buy this share so my interest bought apple and as of right now I don't have, I have the cash, right? But I don't have a desire to buy Apple at these prices. I think I would rather buy it around that 135. So it's way up from where I would like to purchase it. I could get bit in the butt for that. I could, you know, this could still be a great buying opportunity for Apple. And sometimes it is a a mistake to get, to get too uh, attached to your average cost because you miss out on some opportunities. But I don't want my average cost going up that much. Then, of course, we've got Avi, which was up $1.14 today, nearly 1% 1 at $162.20. 95 shares, $15,000 worth of market value. Average cost is right around $95.20. 30% of the portfolio is in Avi. Today, we're up nearly 65 bucks, half a percent. Total, we're up $6,300 with an accumulative return of 70%. And we have a dividend coming in on the same day Realty Income will be paying us next month. On May 15th, we have a dividend of $147.25. Guys, that is nice passive income. Keep in mind, Realty is going to pay us as well. So overall, we're going to have nearly $200 of passive income that month. And that's interest on our money. I can reinvest it or I could put it into something else like T. Rowe Price, Google, or even Altria if it's still a good deal. So guys, I love the passive income. Avi has been by far my best returning stock. And I'm just going to let my flowers grow at this point. I don't want my average cost to go up by that much. This is like Apple, but on steroids. Because since I've bought it, it has done nothing but climb. The dividend has grown as well. So I'm getting a great passive income stream from Avi, And I think the drug pipeline is still very strong. So I am very bullish on Avi, And I'm just going to let it sit and keep growing. I'm excited to see how high it'll go. And I'm excited to see how much passive income will come from this position. And it's my job as an investor to allocate that uh, that free cash, that, that dividend income into a company that could possibly give me these returns or mirror those returns. Of course, I'm not expecting to get 70% on every single stock, but I think a good 50% return could be coming from the next position, which is T. Rowe Price. So it is down $2.58. I have 100 shares, so um, a bit of a loss today, but we have, of course, 100 shares, that 100 right there. We have $10,955 of market value. Average cost is right around $110 per share. So guys, we are actually down for the first time in quite a while for T. Rowe price. Around 22% of the portfolio is in T. Rowe. Today, we're down $253. Total, we're only down around $18, bucks, down 0.16 sorry, 0.016%. So guys, those allocated funds from those dividends could go into T. Rowe right now because it is down. I would rather put it into something that pays the next month. So guys, that's always been my strategy. So if Altria pays me, I want to put it into Apple or AbbVie. And when, and when Apple and AbbVie pay, I want to put it into T. Rowe or Visa. And then when T. Rowe pays, I want to put it into Altria or uh, Coca-Cola. I want my monthly income to constantly be going up. Now, keep in mind, guys, all of these companies year over year grow their dividend. They have a history of growing their dividend. So even if I don't allocate more shares, more funds to these positions, I should gain a little bit, but I want to keep adding every month. But the problem is, as you guys saw with Abby and Apple, I don't want to add at these prices. So the only other way I'm going to get that increase month over month is if I add it to realty income. Next up though, guys, we've got Google. 
It's down today, 300, excuse me, $3.33. <laughs> Could have been down 300 before the stock split, um, but we're down about 2% today. We only have one share at 165.04. Same story as Apple, guys, one share. So, of course, it's going to reflect the market value. Average cost is 155.47. 0.33% of the portfolio is on Google. Today, we're down 286. Total, we're up about 10 bucks. $9.60 with a 6% return here on Google. So I would still buy Google or Alphabet at these prices, but I'd rather buy Realty Income. And then of course, guys, we do have our watch list here. First starting off is Visa. So this is actually going to be the second stock to pay us for 369.12 and the same spot that T. Rowe Price does. Now, I do like Visa a lot. I just wish it would go down a little bit more. Guys, I wanted it around 250 or 260 so it's getting really close to the price that I want to buy it at. So at this, like right now, I would be happy purchasing a couple of shares, and then I'd cost down average. So uh, Visa's getting really close to that, that average cost I want to purchase it at. It is a phenomenal company. I love the management, love the, the massive margins in this company, um, and they're very good at allocating their capital. They're good at competing and keeping their moat um, sustainable. So there's a lot to like about Visa, and I want it to be one of the top three biggest positions in, in the entirety of the portfolio. So in order for that to happen, I need to allocate more funds to this position and add it. So I might split it between Visa and Realty. We'll see where the prices are tomorrow when the market's open. Then, of course, we got Meta at 427, down about four bucks per share right now. Um, guys, I still need this to drop. I want it to be, I would say, like 350 to 400 bucks. So I still want it to drop quite a bit before I put money into it. But this will be one of the bigger positions as well. So I I feel like this and Berkshire are interchangeable. I feel like they'll battle back and forth depending on how the stocks grow. And then, of course, we've got Berkshire Class B. I'm going to the Berkshire Hathaway annual meeting this weekend. I'm super excited. Um, we're going to be there Friday to Sunday. Um, so I probably won't be recording on Friday simply because I'm going to be in the car um, and we're going to be traveling. So I'm excited, though. I love Berkshire Hathaway. Um, I love the insurance arm, guys. I I understand insurance. The only reason that I don't want to buy something like an Allstate, which I've owned before, Chubb or uh, Travelers, is because I'd rather own Geico. If Geico was a standalone company, I would own it in the portfolio. So I really like Geico. It's just the simple fact that it's stuck within Berkshire. And that cash flow that it generates is being used by Buffett and his lieutenants to keep building Berkshire and they do a great job year over year. So some, and, and the thing is with insurance, it's really hit and miss. Sometimes they can be over allocated when it comes to their funds for um, claims and some other years they are way under uh, funded and it hurts the business. So that's part of why I don't want to own just a single insurance company is because it fluctuates pretty aggressively. And even though insurance is a really big cash cow for Berkshire, they do a really good job underwriting. Ajit Jane does a great job running their insurance arm. But they have a lot of other businesses to really help that fluctuation and keep those cash flows consistent. So even if they don't do a great job underwriting year over year for some reason, let's say like there's an earthquake or something like that, um, or a tsunami, or you know, there's a natural disaster. They still have all the other businesses that encompass Berkshire, as well as their stocks that they own, to help that fluctuation when it comes to underwriting and that net profit loss for insurance. So, I do like insurance. I I've studied like uh, Allstate. I've looked at Chubb, and Ch I've really looked a deep deep into Allstate and Travelers. Uh, and I own I did own Travelers as well for a while. I just I didn't like the. The earnings were good, and the, the dividend growth was fine too. It was just, I don't like that uncertainty. I think Aflac is a little bit better when it comes to that fluctuation, but I'd rather just own Berkshire and get get Geico with, the, with it being inside of a conglomerate like Berkshire. So I'm excited to go to the meeting, um, and I do want to buy it. I, my goal price was, I think I said my goal price was about... 350 to 400 so i could buy berkshire right before the meeting i wouldn't be mad about that but um i don't mind waiting guys so visa and berkshire are near the prices i'd purchase them and honestly i could always cost on average but um I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching. It really does help me mentally just to be able to put something out there and have all the positivity uh you know sharing my journey. 
and it keeps me motivated. You know, it keeps me allocating capital. It keeps me, you know, researching and, and looking into new positions and new opportunities. It, it really helps me keep um, focused on my investing journey. So I want to say thank you to everybody that's checked out the videos lately. Um, remember to like the video. It really does help. Guys, every episode, if you like it, it helps me out. Um, hit the subscribe button. I've noticed a lot of the people that watch aren't actually subscribed. So if you enjoy the content, if you enjoy the daily grind of me posting videos um, and the consistency that I try to have here on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, guys. It really does help out. But with that being said, guys, I want to say thank you for watching, and I will see you tomorrow with another Robinhood portfolio update. Take care, guys.